Hey everybody. Okay, so if you saw the previous video or the related video about this one, which is how to pick uh, and choose a developer, this video is about how to pick a client. Literally the opposite. So again, remember there's a bad indicators or bad flags about a, a, a client or a developer, and there's good indicators or good flags about a client or the developer. They're mixed together here, so that's why some of them don't make sense. Like in this first one, charges for first meeting, that's that's most for developers. Uh, a client wouldn't charge for that. I mean, that would be, wow, weird. But this is mixed in, in related to meetings with an issue that very rarely it happens, but when it happens, you, you need to avoid those clients. So, the typical client that they set up the meeting or you set up the meeting and both actually um, confirm the, the meeting time and everything and then they don't show up for that meeting the first time okay it could, something could have happened remember some people have kids uh health issues people that they need to tend to etc 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 some of them might not even have the time or something emergency happening from that first meeting and they didn't have the time to respond or tell you ahead of time, hey, the, the, something came up and I can't, we can't meet. We'll need to move it. That's that's understandable. Okay, you can't judge them just for the first meeting. But if it happens a second or third time, now things are just weird. Okay, for us, we have a rule that when it happens the third time, and they didn't even respond to our emails, we just that's it. That that was all. Goodbye. There's no nothing else because they never um respect the time we actually wait uh um, some developers wait five minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes we wait up to 30 to one hour for them because of traffic family and all the things that we also go through and understand uh, even there was a case where why would we wait an hour because there was a case where that same day they had the the daylight savings time thing and it, they join, they they think that because we live in a different country or something, that the hours are going to be matching together. Uh, there's Most of the countries actually don't have that daylight, the DST at all. Um, so we don't go through that, especially in the U.S. They, they do a, that twice a year. And, you know, it, it just it creates a lot of confusion. Do know that the client... Is the one that needs to be taking or taking notice of that or a note so that if they have if they on their end they have a daylight savings time thing they should tell you if they obviously if they have the time to to tell you i mean if it happened the same day they're like whoops it came out of the blue um but they are the ones that need to to organize themselves in regards to that because maybe your country doesn't have that my country doesn't doesn't have it, and there's a lot of clients that I, I work with that don't also don't don't have those weird, I I, I would say nonsense kind of changes there um, on the time on the time of day. Um, so that that's something about the meetings. Okay, uh, there's others that have, for example, if they have Safari, an old really old version of Safari or something like that, they might have issues connecting to your um, meeting room, you should be flexible um, in regards to that. Um, but if they're like, no, I don't want to use yours, I want to use Zoom, or I want to use my own thing, and you need to register, I have maybe twice a case where the meeting room that they want me to join, it it costs, what was it, like $2.99 or something for me to, so they are like, no, no, don't worry, you only need to pay $2.99 for us to meet. I was like, why, okay, why do we, do I need to pay to meet with you? It sounds like a lead kind of thing. So it was weird that what, that got canceled right away. That's a really bad flag. If there if there if for you to be able to talk to the the client, you need to pay or something like that, or they don't respect the time too many times without letting you know. That's a red flag there. Prices are way higher or, or way low. This this uh, point actually applies more to developers, but let's put it from the perspective of the develop developer to the client there are some clients that might want a um, uh, um somebody like you give an estimate here this this estimate 
uh, and it's based on this time frame and we're going to be doing this and that based on the feedback that you gave us. If they're like, well, I talked to Tom and Tom gave me half the price. At least from my experience, after you've dealt with so many people, that's a red flag immediately there. And instead of me negotiating, well, if they give you 50% less, then let's do it. No, no, no. I actually give you the price based on the experience that I have and how hard that that task or project is going to be. Uh, that's why I always say the cost is based on the difficulty of the project. The, the time is another factor, but the difficulty, the thinking about how to solve it, is one of the main uh, points that I, I why the, the price is in, I, I price stuff in such a way. But if they start doing that, I immediately tell them, hey, here's the marketplace. You can go here, you can look for other developers, or go, go with Tom. That's it. That's it. That's, you you got to, one of the things that, uh, um, one of the points that I mentioned here, I call them the Jerry Maguire rules, but just some of the points that I learned from from that movie and books and, and experiences in my life is you got to know your value. You have to know your value. And your value needs to be objective based on the experience that you have, based on how you deal with certain uh, problems and solutions in the software world. And you need to be fair about that. And if you're being fair, it means that the moment that you give your value that should be a value that should be a value that that's respected okay uh there's no guarantee or no ethics um we've had cases for example uh as developers you'll know that we have cases with on my previous video i actually mentioned that we have like 11 um bd owners that out of 2000 something that we had an issue with uh, out of all of those, there were only two that was literally my fault. It was literally my fault. My fault as the leader of the group. Because as the leader of the lead developer, lead something, uh, at that moment, I had I had somebody that was working with us. He actually created a group um, later that's also in the marketplace. But um, let's say that we put a lot of trust in that person. And that person created in a very, let's say, smart way, an immense amount of problems that ended up affecting us for years. And also, it made us do a lot of refunds and create a lot of moral and ethical problems for us with those clients. It's good that some of those clients were able to bypass that when I had a meeting with him, because he, he was the one in charge of the meetings with the clients. Um, and, and they were able to stay with me with a guarantee that we would finish their work, the work that they already paid without paying anything else until we finished that work, they would not pay anything else. And they, they actually, they, 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 we, we still have one of them. Um, out of those two, we still have one of, of them here with us after, after what, three years? Um, yeah, two years, I would say, of that problem happening, which is which is awesome. And she's a very beautiful person. Um, all the, the partners that we have and most of the BD owners that we work with are, are beautiful people that you can learn a lot about. But um when you are as a developer looking for a client and you have somebody that's working with you, you got to be very careful who you trust and how they handle things because you get, um, they call that backstabbing or, or something. There's not a word for that, but it's, it, yeah, it, it's, you put a lot of trust in your team and all that. And if that ends up affecting your client, their client, um, it's right about the issues that are happening, you can either offer them a guarantee in a certain time frame without them adding more money into the to your pockets or have ethics and just do a refunds and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, you'll get through. You'll get through. Well, I mean, we did it. Um, it's, it's not a funny moment at all. Actually, many, many of the partners that we had at that moment actually pitched in and helped us, let's say, survive. Because we were almost, almost gone at that moment. Um, basing your opinion on reviews, you already know that that applies on for for the developers. Um, 
So it's not related to, to the clients. All marketing and no show, this happens a lot when people start uh, with the client starts talking a lot about, um, you know, the ideas that they have, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And when you start asking them, okay, what's your goals? What are your plans? What are your strategy? Why are you bringing people here? They don't know. That's a bad indicator. That's a bad indicator because um, if you're going to be partnering with this person, it's you're going to waste time. Again, as I always say, time is it's the highest currency that you can ever have. Okay, so it's very important for you to to optimize the time. Um, and if they're going to be a single project, you need to guide them because it's still it, it's. I mean, you, they might pay you, but it's still a waste of your time and their time if the uh, the, the concept of starting out the the site doesn't end up in in something that produces them. Unless they're a non-profit or something like that, but if it doesn't produce in, in a goal and the objective that they want to, then it's something that you should guide them. But it's also a bad indicator for them about the planning that they have for it. There's some uh, um, partners and video owners that have met that when they start talking about their plans, their plans are bulletproof. I mean, they. I mean, I wish. I wished. I worked with them as a developer in their company because they are they are amazing to hear and listen and sometimes the meeting goes from 30 minutes to like three hours and you don't know you, you don't know and you learn so much from them but you know you need to know which clients have a plan for their site and which ones don't so you don't waste the time there okay and you don't waste their time. Uh, priority is, is the money, not the site. This is more for developers. After paying, they disappear. This is weird to happen to a client, but it has happened several times with us. So they they talk to us. It's a big project. And they pay. They pay the full amount because uh, it didn't get to the point where the, 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 the amount of money that the project costs should be divided, at least with us. And then they forgot about creating the admin account. They don't reply to the emails. They a bunch of things. They didn't die. They didn't disappear. They just well the 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 last two cases is that they went in vacation the day after paying, and we didn't know. They didn't tell us. So there were a lot of questions. Remember, because it's a big project, there's a lot of back and forth feedback. Okay. Uh, we found this issue. Okay, we need to tackle it. Hey, uh, we got a great idea here. You want to implement that additional thing here or enhance this there and blah, blah, blah. They, they were not there to be found until two weeks later. So it, will, it was a lot of waste of time. Misinterpreting for their own benefit. This also happens with clients, not just developers. Uh, you tell them, okay, this... A project will be not done in uh, you know five hundred dollars in one week, uh, but if you're gonna be adding this other thing, it'll be a thousand. It'll take two weeks. They end up adding that other thing, the one that takes two weeks and costs a thousand, and then they get they they don't understand why you're charging a thousand for what they understood as the five hundred in one week, and then the, you you end up in this whole thing. For those cases, always write everything, emails, uh, telegram chat, uh, contract or something like that. So all both parties have everything written down or a video or anything. OK, so there's no um, miscommunication there about what needs to be done. But you do need to know that there are specific clients that we had where they they're they're Where did I put it? They're very snake tongue like. So they, they know how to go around and I don't see those often, but we've had to deal with maybe three or four of them in, in seven years. But they're very, they're very dangerous because they can, you can end up uh, um, saying yes to very complex projects for a very, very low cost that puts in danger you, your family, and the team and their family, which is how I handle my my team. We're we're just one huge family of of people, okay, that take care of each other. 
uh, assuming their abilities are tied directly to their English level. So when somebody notices that I don't speak fluent uh, English, I've had cases where they um, disregard me, remove me. Um, just, a, no, we don't want to speak with a um, uh, Spanish speaker. I've had those cases too. I'm like, okay, sure. Uh, no problem. Apologies from being for speaking Spanish and, and whatnot. Um, and they just want to work with somebody local. Now, I would understand the local part. They want to work with somebody local. Maybe they because they want to um, put their money in in local effort because they want to promote their their city their state. That's super understandable. I, I can't like if they say that I don't have any issue with that. But if a client dismisses you because you're from another country or you don't speak English well and all that without taking into consideration the abilities that you could have added to them to them. It's let, let's put it like this. It's their loss. You don't have to jump into a fight with that. Uh, like if, I'm from Venezuela. And when we escaped from Venezuela, we came to Costa Rica. That when that happened to me, I thought it, they were joking. Because in Venezuela, we we, we don't have the, the, the racism, the, 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 you know, the, the, the all this social issues that other countries have or, or specific countries have about that we just everybody's one cool family that's it you don't you don't get it there's no because of religion or your social status or your the color of your skin we don't have all this all this nonsense let's call it like that okay I mean, maybe somebody's gonna get angry because me saying that because but if you search for um venezuela and how we how we uh, let's say think inside there that that con those concepts or fallacy of social concepts uh don't exist at all they don't just they simply don't exist so the first time that that happened to me i was it, I, th I thought it was a joke and they actually never responded back i was like um hey what happened da, da, da. they never responded back and and then little by little i learned about uh you know um <laughs> xenophobic cases racism and and i grew uh let's say understanding the global scope of things something like that Let, let's just put it like that you still need to think positive uh, if you have a family you need to think about them first and don't let external mm, cases like this uh, affect affect your the flow of how you treat your current clients or family or your current um emotional let's say status okay just think positive that's it go out for a walk eat ice cream kiss your girl or your boy and you'll do great uh selling themselves as developers when they are better at marketing uh we've had well we can translate this one too uh selling themselves as hey if you do this site we will uh give you uh, three more sites to work on but if you can make this one very cheap to do and that's a lie that's another snake tongue kind of thing there that's if they can't pay for this first one they, they can they, there's some arguments against that of what i'm saying because maybe at that moment they can or the strategy that they're doing here is not money related but most of them are money related and most of them will abuse your abilities to a point where um they'll just kick you out of the site remember that on bd sites the developer really, unless there's, you know, there's specific developers that actually do some bad things here. But if you're an honest developer and the owner of the site kicks you out of the site, there's absolutely no way for you to defend yourself. Uh, we've had cases where, for example, we did everything on the site. And there was this site. It was pretty cool. We did um, we did it like a like a road trip. Kind of thing so you would say well we'll start on on miami and we'll go to seattle and then the road trip tried to take you to where most of the members on that road would be in so it would tell you well if you take this trip you'll find this member here 
in, in Orlando, and then you'll find this other member in Louisiana, and then and so on and so forth. And it would show you a map with a road, and it will also tell you which members you would find on that road trip. Pretty cool. It was pretty cool. You can also make events for them and, and, and booking stuff like that. Um, once this whole site was done, and we actually went through the third stage of QA, quality assurance of the site, the next day I wasn't able to go into the site. There was an update that I needed to do with the search engine just to optimize it better. And when I went there, I, I didn't have access. And when I replied to them, they, hey, I don't have access. Hey, can you give me a... Uh, can you check what what's happening they replied to me that everything that we did was horrible again it was the third qa everything was going awesome and that was about five to six months of work on a single site and they reply uh, yeah yeah everything that we did is awesome and we're doing um uh, a chargeback at that at that moment i was using paypal paypal went with them and so they did a chargeback for the last six months. So you can imagine that it went awesome for me to look to lose six months of not just work and time, but also the money at the same time. Because at the end, because I was not able to prove to PayPal that I did that work. Remember, they kicked me out. I was not able to do absolutely anything to 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 uh, to defend myself and we lost all that so uh, basically I, I lost thanks to that I lost a couple of my developers I wasn't able to pay them and you know things happen okay I, I hate saying that's part of life because of because that's BS dude that 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 should not be something normal so you didn you do need to be careful with that type of uh, clients okay I don't, for that specific client, I do not have an indicator because they behaved beautifully all the way. Dur during all the, the, the five, six months there, they were awesome. Always, always. It's just the last day that when it happened. Um, sell, uh, meetings are not, okay. Um, well, for the meeting part, basically it's the same rule. Uh, to get as much information about the client as possible. Why are the, why are you doing the site? Who are you trying to attract to the site? What's your target audience? And even ask what countries, localities, counties, districts, provinces you're targeting, because that could affect the way that you code and the way that you you can optimize the site for them. But they you need to ask the client a lot of questions. If they don't feel like answering those questions, that's a red flag. Because you'll be coding basically blind. And there's sometimes a single phrase, a single word that they say could change, completely change the way that the whole code works. And it would save you hours. I had cases where just by luck, some, by a little bit of luck, I went back to the client and something told me to ask the client about a specific thing that they went on the search engine. And when they told me, uh, okay, yeah, it's good that you answer that because it, I like, I would like it to work like this. That changed the whole flow in time from two weeks, from two weeks to two days, just because they wanted to change that little thing there. That I wanted to make sure that it, it was exactly like they wanted it to be. So that that totally changed the whole thing. And I actually told them about that. And that's what we, what you have. It's super important the meetings here. Um, do not get bullied. Do not be afraid. I mentioned this here because if you go to the marketplace, somebody, for example, I got bullied uh, a couple of weeks back or something, maybe a month or two back. Uh, somebody left a super negative uh, review on my on my on my marketplace. Again, I really don't care about the reviews. They're 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 there could be marketing strategies and stuff like that. It could be fake, okay? But I got bullied because this, which took me, it took me a while to find that that owner, that be the owner. He actually asked for a $250 project in, in January 2018. Okay, hear me out. He asked for a $250 project, which was 
the cover photo. At that moment, BD didn't have a cover photo. We had a we had our own custom cover photo, and which now behaves very similar to the current BD cover photo. So the answer was to simply remove our cover photo and use BD's one because they 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 share uh, visually speaking at least they share a lot of things. Okay, but he left the the review again. It was January 2018. Uh, I believe I started work in the beginning of February, and we, end, we finished like in a week or two weeks after that. So basically, we're February 2018. So that's 2018, 19, 20, 21, 22. So four years or five years, however you want to manage the, the counting there. After five years, he came back to the marketplace, and he mentioned that I believe I broke his cover or didn't offer warranty for it. It's five. It's been five years, and it, it it took me longer to find his email on my Gmail because I hate Gmail when you're searching for something, uh, than to to you know to, to contact the guy. And then at, at at that point, because he left that in, instead of communicating with me, because I'm pretty sure that guy has my email. My my email is everywhere. He did not communicate with me. He actually put that there, and that was it. You so sometimes will, um, that will sometimes happen to you. There's some clients that even though you did a great job and all that, uh, they'll leave that there. Obviously, there's some clients that if you did do a bad job, hey, expect a bad review. Expect that bad review, and it, it, it was your fault. But you can talk to the client. And, hey, how can I improve? How can I make this possible? But this particular one, because he left it in such a way, one, I, yeah, I don't have any respect for that person. Two, I won't be fixing that. Okay, it, it's part of the ethics and the moral here. I mean, you you came here without talking to me. Five years later, five years later. I mean, you know how many updates BD has had over five years. And you put that bad review instead of communicating with me. Um, and then you expect me to go to the site. No, I'll never fix something on, on that guy's site. Never, ever. So you also need to be on both ways. You need to be responsible for your actions there as a developer. But that the client also needs to be responsible about bullying you because that's bullying. He went there and started bullying me like that. I did not, just in case, on BD, on the marketplace, you can put a complaint on BD and you can say, this person, I did not work for them. This person, I this is what I actually did. You can put your argument, your defense there. I did not do it with this person because I, I wanted to use it as an example for you guys, you, the developers, to know that this can also happen to you. And you can count on BD to help you in objective, fair way. Mind you, because they will take both sides and analyze them properly. Okay, so bear that in mind. Okay, um, offering future profits for free that that doesn't apply to 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 developers. This is more about again. This is a similar point there that I said that yeah, work on this site for free or for a very low cost and then in the future I'll give you more sites to work with that that's most of the time that's just a lie uh, promising something out of their, their control so okay you can get a revenue share don't charge me for the cost of the development but I'll I'll make you join here and you'll get a revenue share or you get something no um, blackmail same situation that I mentioned here that's that's basically what happened to me in the reviews that that guy is like black, blackmailing me uh, no, thank you. Goodbye. Um, not applies to doesn't apply to to clients. Uh, Negotiates for every penny. This actually happens a lot. So, um, for example, we have a, a flexible. I call it flexible search engine. It does a lot, like a lot of things. Okay, and it's nine seventy five. It does a lot of things, and it's nine seventy five. Um, that. Flexible search engine is actually needed by other APIs and services that we offer because it's critical. Without it, we would take 
a month and a half to two months to build certain things. It actually saves us time and cost, and it saves you time and cost as the client. But let's we have a, I have cases where they actually say, well, that's nine seventy five, but the other thing was uh, I don't know a thousand. Let's put a thousand. Well, can you just merge them together and I'll pay you a thousand? No, it doesn't work like that. Ba basically, they're dissing or removing the effort that you're doing and the thinking process there that you're doing with, you know, extra work. You're trying to make their site awesome in function at the functional level or design level, and they they're 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 becoming cheap. And with cheap, I don't work. At least I don't work. I need to respect my 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 work. Okay. Uh, they, you can negotiate up to a certain degree. For example, if they were to say, um, okay, we're doing this. Um, uh, yeah, you, they're using a flexible search engine. So it's 975. Okay. And they're going to be doing this sort of thing on the search engine. And they're, they're going to be doing like three things on the search engine. And those three things independently are like 30,000 each. I mean, 3,000 between them all. But because they're doing the search engine, the search engine will literally replace some of the coding that you got to do on those others. So you, you could take that into consideration, if you're honest, and lower the final cost for the client. If, I mean, it, it's up to the, again, the work ethics. Uh, but uh, that's something that we could do. Sometimes I, t I actually tell the client, well, this affects this flow of how the, the 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 search works or how the posts are shown or how this and that or i also tell them well you're asking for the same customization but it it's uses it's, it's using the same widget so i won't charge you for that because it's just a copy paste at that at that moment you do the first one you copy paste and you just change maybe a value or two and that's it so you got to be honest there too with the client but you also need, once you explain all that to the client, if they start getting picky, that's a red flag. Avoid them. Avoid them. Because of a lot of bad things that can happen in the future. You only want to work with, with good, honest, hardworking clients that value your time, value your experience, value and respect the costs, which, which need to be justifiable. Because, again... Their developers are really bad. So if you're an honest developer, these bad developers will affect you. Um, you need to avoid members that ask for too many ideas and features, but there's no game plan. They, they don't have a, a goal, an objective, a deadline, a time, stage, something, because that will turn into a snowball effect of problems for you as a developer. Playing the blame game. That also happens. If on both sides, on the, on the first meetings, the, the, the base or in the basics of the plan, the objectives of what they need to do on the site were not talked about. The relevant information was not gathered. All that information was not put into writing. So there's no question about what needs to be done in a very understandable manner, by the way. Not just change homepage. I mean, that, that could mean everything. Um, then you end up avoiding this if you actually do your homework with that, with this part. So on the blame game, it's basically confusion about what they asked um, about. But there are some clients that play around with this. Like you as a developer need to make sure that you gather all the information in writing properly. Everybody understand what's going to be happening there. Don't skip on the details and you will avoid this happening to you. There's also developers that are not responsible. We've had cases once we finish the work, they don't pay the other 50%. Uh, I thought we were done. I thought with the, with the first 50%, I, I actually somebody actually told me this. I thought the first 50% was the whole amount. I thought the 50% was the whole amount. And they're literally saying the 50%. Um, so they don't take responsibility the same way that some developers don't. There's some clients that don't. And, and obviously, as a freelancer, it's everything is up in the air when stuff like this happens. So that's why it's super important for you to be able to pick the, uh, uh, um, an honest client that 
if you're lucky, wants to be with you for a long time and wants to work with you uh, together for a long time so you can grow their business. Because if you grow their business, it grows your business. Okay? Um, if you already saw the previous video, then you know about this. Know your value as a developer based on your knowledge, your experience, um, your, your ethical approach, your empathy with a client, etc., etc. Do not do business with bad people because a lot of bad things can happen and they can abuse you in many, many ways. Be fair and be objective about what you're going to be doing, how much you're going to be charging, how long you're going to be taking, why it takes that long, why, charge, why the cost is like that, why do you need to meet with them multiple times, why they need to provide you with certain information, etc., etc., etc. Not everything is about money. Remember, it's about knowing what the site is about, why they're offering those services, their audience, members, products, services, membership levels, joint process, marketing campaigns that they're targeting, email campaigns they're targeting. Are they going to have a claim listing? How are they going to be treating the claim listing? Is it going to be through etc., 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 etc.? That, if you care about that for the client, the client will care about how they're going to be doing this for you. Most of them, okay? Now, a good indicator. If the client comes in and they have a they have a plan, that's a beautiful. If they, can, if they, they even divided that in stages, oh my God. Then, yeah, I can kiss them. Because they save you time as a developer. Tr trust me, it saves you a lot of time to a lot of weeks of work. Um, open to guidance and feedback. If you're very open to that, um, then awesome. Because again, you can you can provide them feedback and they'll cherry pick what they want from there, and you can both grow and work together for the goal of the site. Uh, have possible deadline or stage deadline, so that means that uh, the site needs to be launched by December, and we're gonna divide this in five stages, each of which are two months each, and on this stage we're gonna do this and that and blah blah blah. That's awesome. If they work as a team at a boss. Because it's the site that needs to help. So we've had to deal with uh, people that you 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 do the work and you need to be um, fishing for the client every so often. And I say fishing because you never know what they're where they are, what they're doing, if they're going to be contacting you or not. And they have a deadline, and that deadline sometimes changes. And they're and then when something happens, it's your fault. I had a case where we actually finished everything on their site. Everything was beautiful. The plugin was like a voting system for them. And the actual uh, staff members and owners, in this case, the BD owner, uh, changed, set the, um, the date of the plugin uh, for a specific date that they had a meeting with. And the plugin actually, what the plugin did was the, the page where the voting happened. If the voting didn't start, it showed something. But if the voting started, it changed. It changed the whole page from who are the voting uh, candidates to the actual voting uh, um, stage. So people started voting on the stage one and stage two and then stage three, and then he told you statistics about how the voting went and all that. Okay, that that owner actually put the date exactly on the meeting that he had about the voting plugin. And that screwed up the whole thing. He ended up blaming us. We had a really bad communication from there on. Uh, part was my fault because I, I, because I couldn't believe that after so many months working on that and, and literally putting my team, even on the weekends working on it, he would blame me. Uh, he would still blame me. And the issue was, was that they 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 actually picked the wrong day for the plugin to kick in on the same day that the meeting was going to kick in. The other error, which I am I actually told them several times, is they needed to test the voting system because it was very complex. I offered videos. I actually met with their staff, but the owner it, it rarely would he stay for me to teach him about his own site. And that was the downfall of the whole thing, uh, being responsible. So that also is related to the good communication and work as a team, which is very, 
important uh, being responsible for your time as a developer and you for the client, for the effort of both, for the tasks that you each need to do, okay? Uh, be fair with costs. Um, um, some There's some countries where um, the culture is very different from, from others, let's say. Uh, there's a particular country where um, most of the problems that I've had came from. But there's other beautiful countries where uh, I haven't had my first issue yet. That's what I said. But in regards to cost, um, you give them a fair cost and they're like, okay, let, let's do it. Um, and I tell them, okay, it's because of this. And I actually explain to them why the cost and all that. And awesome. And they're very up for it. There's others that basically things just go downhill super quick. The moment that you talk about the cost. So... If they wanted something free, you got Fiverr. You can go to Fiverr and trust that a developer will do magic for them there. Um, have ethics, go both ways. Care about the other party. You never know what they're going through. Again, for the client, they might be going through something really bad. As for the developer, either family, health, struggling financially or something, okay? And from both ends, in, in the client, really, if you're having problems with something or another. Uh, right now, for example, we're having an issue with one of the partners uh, in regards to the, the there's a, a mobile app that we're creating for iOS and, and Android for them that does a bunch of things. Like basically they can use the whole site from, from the phone and do a bunch of things. But they're strong, we're waiting for them um, for the for their own, not ours, their own iOS and, and Google developer accounts to be created. They, because we can't use, as an owner, you should not be leaving the accounts in charge of, of the developers. That You should own that. Because at the end of the day, you should own also the code for those apps. Because what happens if the developer goes away? Same for the developer. If you're responsible for that, you need to let the client know about that. Don't be a you-know-who from certain places where they don't tell that to the client, which makes the mobile app and any other app be directly responsible by the developer. So that client is 100% tied to that developer. That's evil. And like Google, don't do evil. Um, I, I could go on with that point, but anyway, work together. That's pretty straightforward. Work together in pro of what? In pro of the site, the business site that you both are growing together. Okay. So those are the indicators how you can pick a client and how you more or less can detect a bad client. There's more things. Okay. But I, I try to narrow down the, the most common ones that we've, had so far um and yeah and that's it so with that said think positive big hugs to everybody and yeah that's it